BBC News. This is BBC Radio 4. Now we've a new classic serial. In his celebrated novel of revenge and retribution, Alexandre Dumas brought to life the horrors of an island prison in the Bay of Marseille, a prison in which two jailers are preparing for a burial at sea. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas Adapted by Sebastian Bonchkevich Part 1 Who is he to? 27. For here? Governor wants him buried tonight. <clears throat> the dead, they say, comprehend everything. The old him now in all his glory. <clears throat> the light looks so very great. Abbe Faria. <coughs> Stinks in here. Never noticed. But what of the man forced to live as though dead? Huh? Oh, mother of God, he's heavier than he looks, ain't he, Swan? Which way round do you want to do this? Well, top of the head first. You hold the ends together and I'll stop stitching up the shroud here. What of the man, the living, scarcely breathing man? You ever think it's true? The treasure Abbe Faria said he had stashed. <laughs> What of Edmond Dantes? What do you think? <coughs> Where's the <your> weight? <coughs> You'd think you'd be stiffer in the limbs, wouldn't you? Bring the barrel over, please. Well, five hours is a long time. <coughs> you get hold of the weight, and I'll lift his feet in first. <coughs> and then... <coughs> the body. You come here today, my most honoured friends. And ask me to describe all I know of the cataclysm in Paris. Oh, what's what you're doing? I'm sorry, Swan. And now that a fitting and respectful time has passed, so as not to dishonor the insane and the dead, it is the Count's most solemn wish that I, Ide, his loved and trusted companion, now describe in every detail the events of that extraordinary year in Paris. <laughs> Get the body back in the barrow. So that you may understand, at last, the meaning of the Count's actions. I'm trying. And comprehend, finally, the true nature of his wrath and revelation. <laughs> That's more like it. But first, most honoured friends, you ask me to describe the situation of his birth. Yeah. Let's get rid of it. His pedigree and parentage. But I must say to you clearly, and I hope without rancor, that the character of the Count is forged here, in the bowels of the notorious Chateau d'If, with neither pedigree nor parentage to guide or protect him, when he is still poor, wronged Edmond Dantes. Imagine, though. Just imagine if Faria was right. The treasure of Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo is nothing but a pissing stop off Corsica. Ugh. I'm getting way too old for this. Armed only with a righteous storm of vengeful fury, which rages now in his embattled and broken heart. Thunder now. Let's get this done, Swan. Ah, oh, Dantes. Dantes, when will your ordeal... Maybe, Claude, you'd be so kind as to open the door to the parapet. Be done. There's no need to be nasty. <laughs> Mary and Joseph, wheel the barrow over to the buttress and tip it on my say so. Well, where are you going to be? I'm carrying you down. You're not expecting me to tip him without you? My back's gone. Then he can stay out here all night and you can explain that to the governor. Oh, just tip it when I say so. And now... One. At last... Two. He's... Three. Free. And it's here, in this one desperate moment, that the true beginnings of the Count may be properly perceived. It's here, 
In the depths of the unrepentant sea, pitch black and frozen, while Edmond Dantes, forgotten prisoner 34, struggles to discover the knife he has for so long concealed. A knife, he prays, will soar through the thoroughly secured bonds which hold him fast to the very bottom of the sea. Dantes, now tempted by the seduction of the deep, to relinquish, to surrender, to forget. Dantes, who knows that in actual fact he can never surrender. Dantes, who knows in every aching fibre of his being that he must, in actual fact, now fulfil the destiny he has appointed for himself and at last be... Dantes. Happy for him? Our time together is short. Am I dead? On the contrary, dear Dantes, it is I who has passed. But you can't be here, my dear old friend. You can't be here. Always remember, Edmund. Never forget. Never forget what? The names of those that wronged you. Uh, the names of those who connived uh, to ensure your disgrace and destruction. Never forget them. Never. No. No. Then say them. Say them. I'm loud for all the universe to hear. I can't. I can't. I'm so tired. Abyss, say so... them, Edmund. Uh, Dongla. Yes? Dongla and Fenon. And Fenon, Fenon, the, the, yeah, the good, cattle. Don't taste good. Uh, Remember. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, the, the prosecutor, the, the crown prosecutor. His name, don't just say his name. The bill for. Repeat them. Repeat the names of those who betrayed you. Dongla, Fenon, the bill for. Louder. Dongla, Fenon, the bill for. Louder still. Dantes, loud enough to wake the righteous! Thunder! Fenna! The Villefort! Good. Dantes. But what of you, my, my dear Abby? Good love, you're there, 34, you hear me? At about this time, I'd imagine the prison guards are opening the door to your cell. I'm talking to you, Dantes. And we'll attempt to. To rouse you. Stop playing silly buggers, 34, and get... Oh, no. Oh, bloody hell. No. Close! Close! That affects the governor! What's happened, Swan? Don says... Don says has escaped. What do you mean, escaped? Look! That's the Abbey! Oh, no! Then where's Don says? Exactly! It is all exactly as we predicted, Dantes. But now you must concentrate. Now you must remember why God has given you this great opportunity. Don't love Fernand de Villefort. Yes. Don't love Fernand de Villefort and I shall be avenged. Yes. But how? With God's blessing, Dantes, with the powers of deduction by torture, and with the treasure, the treasure I bequeathed you, the treasure of Monte Cristo. Trust that you do God's will, dear Edmund. Trust that you are his chosen instrument of revenge and revelation. I do trust it. I do. And that from this moment on, no earthly king can ever command or contain you again. Riga. And then, as if sent by the very hand of God, the bloated body of a drowned Maltese seaman thumps insolently onto the rocks beside him. Dantes, swift as wild lightning, casts off his filthy prison shirt and hastily pulls on the drowned man's cap and blue jerkin. Over here! Over here! Where are you? On the rocks here! On the, on the rocks! God, did you see the boat? I, I can't! I, 
I can't reach it! I can't reach it! Run! Not good! You have to let go of the rock! Would I be drowned? I'll haul you in if you can grab it! Now try! Help me! Help me! Swim! Toward the rock! I have it! I have it! Then hold fast! Then not! Got you, Maltese! Maltese? Think, Dantes. Think. You are Maltese, aren't you? The wreck yonder! Thought you had to have been. Oh, I, am, I am. I I am. Maltese. Yeah, my, my ship was wrecked. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Was he, Jacopo? Poor man's half drained, Captain, but I think he's Maltese. Yeah, throw him overboard. Check that none of these kegs is damaged. Captain Batana. Good watch, you're not thinking straight, Jacopo. He's a spy or squeals to the Coast Guard. Then I'll cut his throat myself. Let's just give him a chance. That's all I ask. <sighs> Let's get out of the storm. Hey. Hey. Have some rum, Maltese. That's it, my friend. That's it. Gently. Oh, gently. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't want you dying on us, do we? What's your name? The name's Jacopo. Now, listen to me. Because I don't want to have to say this twice, all right? All right. You don't know us. You don't remember us, clear? Smugglers. You're, uh, you're smugglers. And best you forget it. Now, rest up as well as you're able, and we'll see where we are in the morning. Assuming we're all here, that is. Oh, well, wait, friend. The year. What's the year? What? The year. Uh, 1829. And the date? Uh, February the 28th. 14 years. 14 years. You've got to rest, Mortis. Huh? Rest. <laughs> but sleep will not come for Dante's. 14 years. 14. Yes. By dawn, the storm has passed, leaving the sea restless, rebellious. You'll never get her between the rocks, Captain! Think too wild! Let me try! We're way too close! Feel I don't know that! Stir her out! Pull her! Pull it, but she won't! Can I give her a try? You need to get below, Moti! I know these waters! From where? I've sailed them a hundred times and worse than this, too! Give your mate the wheel! Now, the trick is to sail her into the squall and then. <clears throat> Surprise her! He's running away from the boat! Do you see that, Captain <laughs> Good work, Maltese! Oh, where are we headed? South to Corsica! <sighs> you want me to take over? Oh, she's a good boat, this! She handles well! Of course she does! She's a Jean Amelie! Hold her steady now! Understood? <laughs> nicely done, Maltese! <laughs> Very nicely done! <laughs> Confident, suddenly youthful Edmond Dantes stands again at the prow of a ship. There she goes! And as the days become weeks, Dantes makes himself indispensable. Who taught you to sell this good Maltese? Picked it up. Picked it up? From Master Simon. Ask no questions, Jacopo. But Tom won't hear a word against you. That's rare, Maltese. Rare like... Unicorns is rare. You're a good man, Jacopo. And I owe you my life. You did every man aboard a fever. Doesn't mean I'm not grateful, though. Nor will I forget it. Never. <laughs> You're a strange one, Maltese. 